So I know you guys were expecting another comic dub from this channel, and uh, something Zoin related, but to be honest, I'm still waiting on lines from actors and actresses that I work with on the internet. You know who you are. And I'm also waiting on the animator, my lovely girlfriend, to work on one comic together to make it a little bit more entertaining to look at with, uh, minor animations here and there. I still wanted to come out with content for you guys to enjoy, and I had a really weird idea. Why not combine two of my favorite things together? League of Legends, and Dungeons and Dragons. So what I'm going to do for you guys today is make Kane into a playable character in D&D for you to integrate into your own games should you desire. And I'll show you guys how to do so in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. I want to give a disclaimer before we start that uh, if you do use Kane into your games and campaigns, I would recommend giving him a different name or perhaps altering the backstory to fit the campaign a bit better that you are in. Unless you worship Kane in the and the ground he walks, or the walls he floats through, or I, I don't know. Then, uh, hey, go ahead. These are just merely guidelines in my humblest opinions, what I think Kane's stats and what class he should be. You can play him any way you want, so other than that, let's get started. Will you prove worthy? Probably not. Just as all games of League of Legends start, we're going to be starting at level 1 for Kane. We'll go over a few other abilities that he gets from his classes and whatnot, but for now, let's just start at level 1. From all the races that League of Legends has to offer, it's pretty safe to say that Kane is a human for this character that we're building, so we'll put him down as human. Kane's alignment in this character sheet is going to be lawful evil. He has shown himself to be willing to do heinous acts, but is willing to follow a code such as the Order of Shadow and follow in Sed's footsteps in being the leader of the Order. And if you say, like, where does it say that? It's in the word Order of Shadow. So we will classify Kane as Lawful Evil. I've had fellow D&D enthusiasts say that Kane should be a warlock because of his corruption with Rost and the warlock having the Pact of the Blade. I sincerely disagree. I believe that Kane is a monk and he will follow in the footsteps of the Way of Shadow in the monk archetype. As it would fit Kane's fighting style, as monks don't wear armor and Kane views armor as something of a cumbersome burden and would prefer to use shadows as his own armor anyways. It's also fitting for the monk's first abilities to get at level 1, unarmored defense and martial arts. As I stated, Kane doesn't wear armor, but he still has a pretty high armor class, and martial arts is very fitting because Kane is very competent even without a weapon. The only real downside is that you wouldn't have proficiency in every single weapon, but hey, short swords and all simple weapons, going to but not limited to, Club, dagger, great club, hand axe, javelin, light hammer, mace, quarterstaff, sickle, spear, light crossbow, dart, short bow, and sling. That still is a lot of weapons to master. And for additional proficiencies, you also get tools, which could be one artisan tool of your choice or a musical instrument. Now, you may choose whatever you want. We could do smithing for the sake of creating uh, assassin weapons or brewing for the sake of creating poisons, which Kane doesn't really use, like Twitch over here but it's still role-playing options that you are free to decide. So for Kane's class, we're going to be making him a monk. And when it comes to archetype, the Way of the Shadow would be the best way to go for Kane, as it has shadow arts that would be helpful to casting dark magic that would be very akin to the teachings of Zed, and the ability Shadow Step that you get at level 6 is practically exactly the same as Shadow Step in the game. You teleport in shadows and you could flavor it as you go into walls and you appear into another shadowy spot, just like the ability Shadow Step. So, the archetype that we'll be going with when the time comes is the Way of Shadow. Plus, this shit's broken, there's no cooldown on it at all in D&D. Kane has always been graceful in his movements and in his attacks, and has always expressed extreme speed and precision. So, if we're using Standard Array, we're going to be making Dexterity 15. That way, you could increase your armor, you could increase your initiative, you could increase your attack. Dexterity is a very powerful stat overall, and you would be a fool not to make Dexterity Kane's highest stat. For Kane's 14, we're going to put it into Charisma, as Charisma can be related to confidence in social situations, and Kane has shown such confidence it even goes to the point of arrogance, and such a weapon that he has mastered is fear. And fear ties into intimidation, and intimidation ties into Charisma. Even in the alternate universe, Odyssey, Kane has been able to show himself as a very competent leader, so Charisma would be a very fitting stat for Kane to have. 14 would be where I would put the Charisma. Now for Wisdom, we're going to make it 13. Lore-wise, Kane's able to adjust to situations accordingly, 
and he doesn't exactly break down and panic just like the fellow Noxian soldiers he fought us besides as he was a child. And Kane was even able to view things in a rather wise way. Rather than seeing weapons as merely weapons, he sees them as tools. Which is, in my opinion, kind of wise for him to comprehend that kind of mindset of just weapons to be merely tools. And gameplay-wise, Kane perhaps has the best opportunity for vision in the entire game of League of Legends. Just stepping through a wall could reveal entire areas, even past other walls. So, it really shows how much vision that Kane possibly could have, not only in terms of mobility, but in terms of seeing enemies before they could see him. So for Kane's wisdom, we will make it a 13. For Kane's constitution, we're gonna make it a 12. From his appearance, Kane appears to be a rather healthy young man who's not exactly extremely durable looking, but from Kane's appearance, he looks like he's in relatively well shape. And just because you're in good shape, that doesn't entirely mean that you're extremely strong. But from what I can tell, Kane looks like he keeps his health in very well regard. For strength, we're gonna make it 10. As I said about his dexterity, he's far more graceful than brutish, but he isn't exactly weak either. I'm sure handling a weapon like Ross would require an extreme amount of strength to allow him to control that weapon, but 10 isn't exactly fantastic, it's actually plainfully average. But I don't believe Kane is either weak or strong, so 10 is a rather fitting place for Kane to have his strength at, so we're gonna make his strength a 10. For Kane's lowest stat, we're gonna make his intelligence 8. I don't believe Kane is exactly entirely intelligent, he may make it up with confidence and with his ways of words and for his vision for what he wants for the future, but I don't really think that he has embraced the consequences of his actions if he follows through with them. Like taking over the order from Zed, which I'm not exactly sure what his goals would be, but I'm pretty sure it would be extremely costly in lives and also in other resources. So we're going to make his intelligence an 8. If you have permission from the DM, use the human variant and add plus one to dexterity and plus one to wisdom and take yourself the mobility feat. Kane has always been one of the most mobile champions in the game and I think that would be very fitting for him to have such a feat which would allow him to go very fast. And for skills from the human race variant, take intimidation and for the class, take acrobatics and stealth. For Kane's background, there's a lot of ways that you can go about it. You could go Acolyte, Soldier, Urchin, Noble, Urban Bounty Hunter, or Haunted One. You could use any of these backgrounds for any reasons that you might have. Acolyte for being in Zed's order, Soldier for being in the Noxian military, Urchin or Noble depending on Kane's role in Noxus. Many people could say like, uh, oh he was a Noble in Noxus, or he was an Orphan, or a Bounty Hunter for taking down high priority targets, or the Haunted One from being corrupted from Rost. But for this character creation, and in my humblest opinion, Acolyte would be most fitting for his role in the Order of Shadow. You will also get the feature Shelter the Faithful. I would say work with your DM to see if you can integrate something that would be like the Order of Shadow, and their influence wherever they are. I would say have it be akin to Assassin's Creed, where you could go there and you could have contracts and have potential quests to open up just from having this feature alone, or you could use it as a place for shelter, just as the feature would suggest. You also gain the skill proficiencies in insight and religion. For personality trait, I would choose the first one, which says, I idolize a particular hero of my faith and constantly refer to that person's deed as an example, which is very fitting because, as a lot of fan art would suggest, Zed Senpai. Kane many times would bring up Zed saying that he would be impressed by his actions, which would be kind of fitting for Kane to see Zed as his hero since that's relatively his only idol that he has had in his life, and someone that he seeks to surpass one day. So it would be extremely fitting to take the personality feat of number one. For Kane's ideal, I think the most fitting one would be the fourth one, which is power. I hope one day to rise to the top of my faith's religious hierarchy, which is what Kane wants to be. He wants to be the Hokage of the Order of Shadow, surpassing Zed in his own regard, becoming the leader of it. There isn't exactly a bond that would fit Kane to a perfect T. You would need to adjust some of the wordings to fit it more better. Like, for example, to get revenge on a corrupt temple, Kane would want revenge on Noxus itself or perhaps number one for retrieving that ancient artifact, but for the sake of simplicity, we will go with I owe my life to a priest that took me in when my parents died, which we could safely assume this priest to be Zed, the leader of the Order of Shadow. 
So we will go with number three, I owe my life to a priest that took me in when my parents died. For Kane's flaw, if our comics were canon, I would say number five, becoming suspicious of strangers and expecting the worst of them, with given Kane's interaction with Zoe from the comics that we have in our, on our little fan channel. But to have it be as closely as possible to the lore, I would say number six, once I pick a goal, I become obsessed with it to the deterrent of everything else in my life, which Kane's goals would be a lot of things from revenge to being the leader of the Order of Shadow, having that only be his entire plans, where even Rost would comment on his obsession with his desire to become the leader of the Order of Shadow or even revenge. I see your nightmares. Do they trouble you? Not nightmares, plans. Our final thing to focus on for our character creation would be equipment. For our equipment, you could choose either A, the sword sword, or B, any of the simple weapons that I have stated earlier in the video. Now, I know what you all are saying. But, Silver, I want to complete my edgelord package with Rost or a scythe. Well, that's something to take up with your DM. Ask him if you could create a homebrew scythe weapon and just say it's a simple weapon since... You know, a scythe is actually a farm tool, very much similar to the role of the sickle. But as I said, bring it up with your DM. Were I to homebrew a scythe, I would honestly just say take the qualities of a quarterstaff and just make it slashing instead of bludgeoning. It's not like I've played D&D for about four years and, uh, you know, made a 15 minute video on teaching you guys how to create cane, but hey. Maybe I know nothing, but to continue our equipment for what we get, we're going to be getting also the Explorer's Pack. It includes a backpack, which is always handy, a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinderbox, 10 torches, which is a lot, but eh, whatever, 10 days of rations, and a water skin. It also packs 50 feet of hemp and rope strapped to the side of it, which is always useful. And finally from the class, you get yourself 10 darts. You can always reskin the darts to say they're shurikens, or you could say they're kunais, which is always cool. Make it more anime. Your background also gives you a holy symbol, which you can say is a symbol to the Order of Shadow, a prayer book, which could be a code to that you abide by, a prayer wheel, which I don't even know what that is. Let me look it up real quick. What the hell is this supposed to be? Five sticks of incense, vestments, a set of common clothes, and a belt pouch containing 15 gold coins. Fitting Kane into a campaign, I believe, would be relatively easy depending on the game your DM is running. You could say that the leader of the order that took you in and you see as a father figure has sent you on an assignment, and you know that this assignment could give you prestige or renown in the order that you serve. You seek to surpass him, but you know that you will never be able to do so while being in his shadow. So using the techniques that you have learned, you now set out to establish your own experience and to surpass your leader and become the leader of the order you serve. This assignment can be whatever the DM wishes to instruct you for your character to take up. It could be just a shoe in just to have your character join up with a party if you've joined up with a game that's already running. Or it's a, a good way to have your party have an adventure hook. You could even ask your DM if you could seek out the, uh, a sentient evil weapon that your master wishes to uncover. And then you could come to the decision, should you return this weapon and receive praise, or should you keep it for yourself and use this power to dethrone him and receive the shocker that the weapon is sentient and is seeking to control your body to destroy the entire world. Oh my. If you're playing in Faerun or the Sword Coast in one of the pre-written adventures, when it comes to factions, Kane doesn't really fit in any of them relatively well, save for two, the Harpers and the Zentarum. The Harpers are a bit more for balance and gathering information and making sure power doesn't get out of hand. And as for the Zentarum, they're basically like the Mafia, using money and whatever influence they have to make themselves untouchable. Which, for either one, Kane doesn't really follow either of them, but they're closer than all the others. If your DM isn't exactly too keen on having something like the Order of Shadow existing, you could have Kane be a so-called worshipper of the god Baal, who is the god of murder. Cults and followers were an often common thing for Faerun to come across. And just in case if you're playing in the world of Ravnica, playing in the guild, the Demir would be a perfect fit for Cain. The Demir, they seek out information, being couriers, and they also take out high priority targets that would cause the city to be in balance with one guild having too much power. And this is Cain as a D&D character. Now you could alter it to whatever you need to have it fit your campaign better or to suit your playstyle a little bit better, but this is how I would make Cain into a D&D character. 
From Kane's backstory, I think he would make a perfectly ideal character as an adventurer, and I think he could fit in any campaign relatively easy. Thanks for checking out this video, I decided to try something a little bit different and a little new, since I'm kind of running out of comics to do that I want to think about. If this video does well, I'll make more characters of League of Legends and turn them into D&D characters. I hope you found this video insightful, and do let me know what you think in the comments. Or if you want more comic dubs, perhaps I'll revive an older comic series that I had drop off the face of the earth, but people have asked me if I could make more of. Who knows, we'll just have to see. Do let me know what you think about in the comments below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for sticking around. Take care for now. I love you all.